Hello friends, I'm coming here today to talk briefly with you about two tiny but mighty words, yes and no. These are the true power words and they can make a world of difference in your work, in your life, and in your productivity. If we haven't met yet, I'm Lindsay Satterfield. I'm a productivity trainer and coach for businesses and individuals. And as you may know, if you've heard me speak before, I like to think about productivity as power, the power to have the impact that you intend, your agency. We are wired as human beings to have agency. So back to these two words, yes and no, these two little simple words, yes and no. You don't need to look further than your nearest toddler to see the potency of these words at play. Am I right? <laughs> if you have a toddler, you've probably heard the word no a couple times. So at a certain point, when a toddler starts learning to speak, they get they start one among the first words that they learn are yes and no. And they use these words with great vigor, right? Because they are experiencing for the first time their agency, their power. They say no, and they get a response. It has an impact, right? So yes and no, toddlers are very in touch with the words, the power of yes and no. But that toddler, eventually, they're in touch with that power, they eventually grow up and start to lose contact with their power as they move into adulthood. With the complexity of power dynamics, of peer pressure, of wanting to be liked, of conflict aversion, all of a sudden we learn we lose touch with the power of yes, the pure power of yes and no, and we start to go and default to one or the other. We have a default response. And we go into what I consider two different camps, the yes people and the no people. <laughs> you know the yes people, you might be a yes person willing and able, yes, 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 yes. You have a little bit of a hard time saying no, right? Yes is your default response. And then there are the no people, right? No, 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 no. Now, I have often looked with incredible awe at the no people. I'm amazed that they can say it with so much conviction. No, 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 no. What I have come to discover in years of working with clients is that often no people used to be yes people. They used to be yes people, but they got burned. They burned out, and so now they've put up the defense of no, and so everything is no. So, that to protect themselves. So, what we want to do is get back into the power seat so that we're using a true yes and a true no to meet the moment, and that we're doing it with skill. So, let's take, oh, one more point. If you don't have a no, if you don't have a no, your yes doesn't mean anything. And if you don't have a yes, your no doesn't mean anything. No empowers yes, yes empowers no. And so we really need to be able to have facility with both. So a few words about yes, and then we'll get to no, because that's where a lot of people have a little more difficulty. So talking about yes, what is yes? Yes is consent. Consent is so much power, giving your consent. It's the active alignment of your will. So when you say yes to too many things, when you get over committed, you can get burned out. And the other thing that can happen is you can get resentful. When you go into resentment, you are falling out of your power. You can know whenever you feel that resentment, that you are losing your own power. So we want to figure out a way to get out of that state of resentment and into our own power. How do we actively give our consent to something? How do we say yes? So I want to point out that in a given day, in a given life, there are lots of things that we feel we have to do. You know, if you have kids, you probably have to take care of them. If you have a job, you probably have to go to work. So there are things that we have to do. However, it's important that we start to take the message. Let me go back. The messaging that we give when we are in that I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to state is undermining to our own power. And very subtly, very unconsciously, 
it can start to diminish our experience, our internal experience of our own agency. And what does that do? It increases, it takes away from the happy hormones, the motivational hormones, and increases stress. When you are under the burden of a lot of have tos, you start to experience more stress. So simple things, simple linguistic change you can do is for those, notice how many times in a day that you're saying, I have to do this thing and determine whether or not you really do have to do it. And if you are choosing to do it, then just shift your language, shift your language to I choose to. This may seem very simple and like what difference would that make, but it can make a huge difference. You start giving your own internal system, your own signaling, the message that you are using your active will, you're aligning your will. And the triggers, as we've talked before about for motivation, are control and meaning. You are starting to give the message of your agency to yourself, and that triggers that neurochemistry of motivation, dopamine and uh, the happy hormones, dopamine and serotonin. So we want to constantly be aware of how we're talking about the things that we're doing. Are you choosing to do it or do you have to do it? So choosing is a much more potent place to be. It's the power of consent. Okay, enough of yes. Let's get to no. So First of all, really the difficulty people have with no is how to communicate it. So it's not just the inartful, no, 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 no. No with nothing else, just a no, uh, a righteous no is important. Um, you may use that in a situation where there's danger or something like that involved, but in most cases, a gracious no always wins. So I, uh, two things to keep, or, uh, Something to keep in mind, two traps you can fall into with no are the apologetic no and the attitude no. So the apologetic no is when you feel so bad that you have to say no. It's such a mixed message and it really does take away your own agency. And it really is confusing for other people. They don't know whether to feel sorry for you or accept your no. So um, an apologetic no is not a helpful no. Also an attitude no. An attitude no often comes when you've said yes so many times and now you're irritated, you're pissed off, and so you say no without any artfulness, right? Without any mastery. You just say in, in, a, in a huff and puff, you say no to whatever the request is. So that's the attitude no. So stay away from the apologetic no and the attitude no. So when you're saying no, you want to consider the context and the relationship the context and the relationship. So in a situation where you don't have any relationship to the person, event, or whatever, you know, you don't really have any history with this person, a no thank you is fine. A no without explanation is fine. They don't need to know your life. <laughs> no, thank you very much for thinking of me. I will need to decline, right? So you don't need to give explanation when typically when there is not a history or relationship. Now, when there is a relationship and a history, let's say with a boss, an employee, a partner, a friend, you may want to give more context. You may want to be more transparent about your no. And you also want to think about how to sell your no. You wanna market your no, right? So understanding who you're speaking to and, and helping them um, see the yes in your no will also be useful. So you may appeal to a similar value. I need to take care of my family or whatever it may be. Now with a boss, for example, you can often show them the yes, um, that it's a yes to something that they care about. So maybe they assigned some report that you needed to do that you're working on, now they're assigning something else. You may need to remind them like, I really need to focus on this. Um, this may be a no for now. And then you can have that conversation. The other point that I wanna make about no is no is so powerful. It's a creative tool. When we can start to enter no into the conversation, there is the opportunity for innovation for better solutions. When we're just yes, 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 there's no constraint. And you know that constraint really does help us come up, problem solve and come up with better solutions. So have the courage of both yes and no, because they're typically going to create 
more productive relationships, communication, and results. So that's what we're talking about today, yes and no. Start taking a look at your own communication. Do you say yes when you should be saying no? Do you say no when you should be saying yes? Do you have a default that you go to? Start looking at that and see if you can um, play with it a little bit. Maybe figure out how you might say no to something that you've had struggled with before. So that's what we're talking about today. Let me see if there's anything else I wanna um, talk to you about. Oh, another little trigger to see is, are you nervous saying no to something? Are you nervous saying yes to something? That also helps to build your self-awareness. And the truth is, when it comes to productivity and general fulfillment in life, self-awareness makes all the difference. It's how we can continue to become more masterful. So on another note or a related note one thing that um, shows what we're saying yes and no to is what we focus on during the day right when you have a focus um, you're saying yes to these things and no to other things so if you would like to get a free plan and assess tool this is a tool that on one side helps you just sketch out your plan and your focus for the week and for each day. And then on the other side, it helps you look back at the week and see how it went. Because the truth is it's not, productivity is not just about, can I check all the things off? It's really about becoming more masterful in all areas of life. So to do that, you need to be able to reflect. This sheet gives you just a couple prompts. You can do it in less than five minutes to assess how it went and make adjustments going forward. So if you'd like that, I will put a link in either the comments or the description or wherever this is posted and you can get that plan and assess tool. So yes and no, I hope you greet your day with a big yes. And if you need to say no, I hope that you can do it with graciousness and that um, you feel good about it, that you feel your own agency and intentionality in it. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you next week.